Let's talk about secrets management. As you know, at this point we have a fully functional web API for our game store and we also have the SQL Server database that will store our game's catalog. Now, somehow we need to get our web API to talk to the database, which of course will involve the use of a connection string with all the relevant details. We have seen that we can use the appsense.json file to store this connection string. However, doing this is not a good idea because it would involve storing user credentials in this file and this presents serious security concerns. For instance, imagine what would happen if you eventually decide to push your source code including this file to a remote code repository. If that repository gets compromised or if someone else with access to the repo pulls your code into his or her box and that box gets compromised, your connection string might suddenly land in the hands of unauthorized people, which now will have full access to your database. And if that happens to your production database, you can be in serious trouble. That is why you should never store any sort of credentials or secrets in your appsense.json file. So, if you can't use this file, where can you store the connection string? Well, you gotta realize that the appsense.json file is what is known as a configuration source. And just like that one, there are several other configuration sources supported in .NET applications, like command line arguments, environment variables, and even cloud-based configuration sources like Azure Keyboard. And the great thing about this is that the ASP.NET Core runtime takes care of combining information from all available configuration sources into a single configuration object that implements the iConfiguration interface. This configuration object is easily accessible to your web API in such a way that it doesn't really need to know where the configuration data actually comes from. Furthermore, your .NET SDK installation includes what is known as the Secret Manager which acts as one more configuration source that is specifically designed to store secrets that developers can use in their local boxes for local development and testing. You can add your connection string to Secret Manager and it will take care of storing this and any other secrets in your local machine's user profile directory, which lives outside of your code repository. That way, you will never risk leaking your secrets as part of your code changes and your web API will still be able to read them as any other piece of configuration. Let's now see how to use the secret manager to store our SQL Server connection string. So the first thing that you want to do in order to use the secret manager is to initialize it. So what you want to do is just go to your terminal over here, and then all you have to do is just use this command line here, .NET user secrets in it, and I'm, by the way, I'm in the gamestore.api directory, right? The directory of your project file. So just hit enter there, and that's going to go ahead and set the secrets, uh, user secrets ID for your project. So if you go now into gamestore.api, you're going to see that this secret ID that is right now in the terminal is now also defined here as a user secrets ID in your project file. So that's the first step. So that sets kind of an entry into the secret manager for your uh, secrets for this specific project. And with that in place, what we have to do is to go ahead and set the secret into the secret manager. And for that, we want to use the command line. But before doing that, let's go back into our readme file. And we're going to also, just like we did with SQL Server, we're going to be adding the, the command line that we want to use to, well, actually set the secret in secret manager, just in case that you want to set it later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, collapse this. And I'm going to open another section here. It's going to be setting the connection string to secret manager. Right, and again, this is a PowerShell section. Just like we did before, we're going to be capturing the password into a variable. So I'm going to repeat that line that we had in the SQL Server section over here. Okay, so that's going to be our SA password. And now comes the command line to actually set uh, the secret. And let me scroll down a bit here. And so what we're going to do is just this, .NET user secrets set. Then we open our double quotes and then what is the actual uh, setting that or secret that we want to set? Well, for this, we want to remember what we said before in Explorer, in AppSettings.json. Remember that we had said that the connection string lives under connection strings and then game store context. So what we want to do is follow that same hierarchy of settings as we set up our secret. That way, the .NET configuration system is going to know how to properly grab that setting and use it exactly how we've been using it so far in the code. Our hierarchy starts with connection strings, right? So I'm going to copy connection strings and put it over here as a first piece of the name of the secret. And then I'll do colon, and then I'll go to the next level, which is gain store context, right? So I'll copy gain store context over here and I'll place it right there. 
Okay, and then I'll close double, qu double quotes, right? And that is going to define the name of the secret itself. Now we need to go for the value. Okay, so double quotes. And so the value, well, the value is going to be really the connection string that we've been using so far, right? So I'm going to go to appsigns.json and I'll copy the entire thing, right? So I'll copy everything here, copy, over here, paste. There we go, there, now we have our connection string. But of course, now we don't want to be using this placeholder. Uh, instead of that, we want to do sa password. And now that we did that, we can go ahead and run these commands in the terminal. So I'm just going to go ahead and open my terminal over here, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit over there, right there. And so first thing, define the actual SA password. And remember that this is, again, this is the uh, SA password that we defined it before for SQL Server, for the system administrator user. So make sure you type the correct password here. So I'm going to type mine. All right. And now that we have that in place, we can go ahead and run our command to set the secret. So I'll copy that, paste that here, hit enter, and the secret has been successfully saved into the secret store. And so to confirm that the secret is actually there, what you can do is the following. So you can do .NET user secrets list, and this should provide you the full list of all of the secrets that you have so far configured for your current project. And so now that that is in place, let's go back into AppSense.json and well, guess what? We can go ahead and fully remove this connection string section. It is no longer needed, right? Which is great. And then if we go back into our program.cs file over here, we don't really need to do make any changes because now the connection string with the exact same key uh, is should be coming from the secret manager and into our connect string variable over here. So I'll keep that breakpoint and I'm going to do F5 to go ahead and do a debugging session and let's confirm that we can actually read the value from secret manager. So debugging session starts and now let's explore our connect string variable over here. And as you can see, we are now getting our full connection string right there now coming from the secret manager. Uh, so it is stored securely outside of the code repository and we are able to use it right away. Notice how I didn't have to make any changes here. And this is the key about the .NET configuration system because later on, we will be changing uh, the place where we're going to be reading this, this connection string from. And so the fact that it is already configured this way is going to save us so much time in the future.